What's up, everybody? It's Big Brian here with two of the members of Protest the Hero with Roddy and RF, who's now going by Riff, so that's awesome. And we're here in Salt Lake City, Utah, 8747 Productions, Skinny Sumo Productions Studios. Talk about you guys' evolution as a band for just a minute, because you guys have, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, and but I have it, and it's this little album called, you know, Calculated Use of Sound, and then you guys released Kazaya, and then you released uh, Fortress, and now Skrillis, is that how they say it right? Skrillis. So the sound in, the sound from Kazaya to Fortress was, uh, you know, it was a step up, but then I, you guys took it really to a whole different level when you came into the new album. And what, what was the change in your writing, and what was the change in how you guys approached going into the studio with that album? I guess every time we, we're very fortunate, I'll say, to have an audience that's kind of grown with us to a certain extent. Like, A Calculated Use of Sound came out almost 10 oh, years right. ago, and what's kind of happened is that people um, allow us to kind of make mistakes in our songwriting and see that, you know, we often try strive for something that's maybe more ambitious than we can actually pull off, but we throw ourselves at the mercy of people's forgiveness and I think that people who've been following us for a long time enjoy seeing that progression because we never really try to do anything other than outdo our previous effort. You know, so we don't go in there with any real sonic idea of this is how it's going to sound, this is you know what it's going to be about. But I think the people who have followed us have seen us become better songwriters and more mature songwriters throughout time and I think are enjoying the sort of storybook aspect of growing along with us. Any input from you? Um... Oh. <laughs> he doesn't like the material that we're sitting on. Ah, uh, well, that makes me sound like a prima donna. Like, I don't know if you guys know, like, it's like nails on a chalkboard sitting on this. So, if I'm sitting here with my hands in my pockets and stuff, that's because I'm being a good sport. I kind of want to hurl being in this room right now. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't express to you how serious that is. It makes me sick. <laughs> I have no input. <laughs> no input. Uh, when you guys go into the studio, you've been using juice a lot, and yeah, we've been trying to get, <laughs> we've been trying to get real jacked up. We've been <laughs> using a lot of juice. A lot of juice. Juice is the record producer for all those guys out there that don't know. And Marcos, who actually toured with you guys when Luke couldn't get in the country, so you guys obviously have a really, you know, strong, great relationship with them. And how important that is that when you go into the studio to get your ideas that you have to get them conveyed the way that you want. It's definitely very important. Um, sometimes it hinders uh, the actual performance because it's like we're just such good friends with those guys that we just get drunk as fuck and then it's like, oh great, there goes that day. Um, but for the most part, it's like, you know, like speaking for myself vocally, um, Juice understands exactly what I'm trying to do. Um, even when I don't even understand what I'm trying to do, he like he can hear it. Uh, he's got a very fine-tuned ear, and uh, there's there's very few people out there that will that you will find that have an ear that's as sharp as his. Especially that he's like 60 now. <laughs> Just kidding, Juice. <laughs> so you, you covered, you know, the. the important relationship how about for you when you play the bass you kind of go out and you think that you have your sound set you go into the studio engineers tend to tinker with people's sound to make it even more present or less present depending on the instrument uh, how, how how important is that for you to trust what he's doing when you think that you've come up with the right sound I think my entire career has been trying to figure out how to dial in a good tone I think that that's probably a lifelong endeavor that people um, people have to encounter. I mean, if you consider it was almost 10 years ago when we first went into a studio, and granted that time wasn't with Juice, but I mean, I didn't and still don't know my ass from my elbow when it comes to that stuff. Uh, I have a better idea now of what I think sounds good and what I think sa sounds appropriate, but uh, what's great is to be able to sort of lean on Juice's experience and his knowledge, and this time around, you know, I got to approach him and I had kind of an idea in my head of what I wanted the tone to sound like in terms of how present it was in the mix and all the rest of it. And we tried out some options and, you know, we ended up making it work. And I love saying this, like, I recorded the entire album on a Mesa Boogie Walkabout Scout, like a bass combo amp. Just, you know, we did some funky stuff with uh, the gains and volumes and stuff. But I was really, really amazed that sometimes, like, 
go big or go home isn't the uh, isn't the principle at play. Sometimes, you know, if you simplify things, uh, you get something that's really a sort of organic, I guess. I don't know. These are buzzwords that guys who don't know anything about audio use to sound like they know something about audio. <laughs> and then, obviously, you go in from a complete different perspective from everyone else. Everyone else tunes their instruments, but you have to come in and make sure that your vocals are the instrument that you play. And you have to make sure that you come in with the, you know, the right mindset to go into the studio. What, what helps you get into the right mindset for going and cutting a track? Uh, it would be easier to answer a question about getting in the right mindset about cutting a fart, but um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like there is, there's nothing you could do. Um, you just you have to be as ready as you can be. You know, you have to know what you're doing. You have to have the parts all written, and then you just go in and do it. Um, you know, like, it's a piece of your anatomy. It's not something that you always have control of, but, um, you know, just, you just have to do it. That's like, that's the only thing I can say, you know, it's like, you can't, you can, you can do all the preparation and take all the vitamins that you want and shit like that, but I don't know why. Just like, <laughs> get your Flintstone vitamins. There's a plug. But it's like, like if you're going to get sick, you're going to get sick. Uh, if you're going to, if you're a shitty singer, you're going to sound shitty. Um... I don't know, and vice versa. You know, there's there's, there's nothing you can do to prepare. You just have to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. And then, <laughs> it, <laughs> they're a long way from home, you guys. Here in Salt Lake City, Utah, again. No, no, it's cool. Uh, let's let's switch real quick to a live aspect. When you come into a performance every night, I mean, the in, in the venue here is the first time you guys have played here. Usually, you guys have been mostly at the Avalon, which for some reason is either under construction or not around. But when you come into a new venue, you guys have an, an engineer, or sometimes you don't have an engineer. When you don't have an engineer, what what are your feelings going into the uh, into the show with, with you know just a sound check and you're trusting the ears of this one guy that maybe you've met for the first time? Yeah, you're at the mercy of the sound guy. I mean, you're. Uh, we obviously bring a front of house guy with us now, and we have for a long time. But there was also a long time in there where we didn't bring a front of house guy. And you know, uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to level with your average sound guy. It's not an easy thing to do. They're you know sometimes some of the most crotchety people on earth. Uh, and it was always just hit or miss. There was either a guy who really took the time and cared to be behind there and knew his room or her room and knew how to dial in a good tone, or it was a guy or a girl that didn't care. And I mean, and we're one of those bands that you can't really just plug it in and walk away, because you kind of have to be riding the faders and that kind of thing a lot. So, I mean, I can't stress enough how, uh, what a relief it is to have someone like doing sound that knows the material, knows the cues, knows what we're going for, knows what parts I fuck up every night to bring me down in the mix. And, you know, uh, it's, it's an incredible relief. And, uh, you know, when we got to that point that we could actually bring a sound guy with us, I mean, I think we started, I mean, we, that was sort of our gateway to professionalism. We're still working on that, though. Yeah. We haven't quite achieved it yet. <laughs> we think you guys are pros anyway, because awesome, awesome musicians. Uh, what what does Protest the Hero have in the future? Obviously, you've had, the album's been out for uh, just about a year now, actually a year, so what, what, what do you guys have planned for the future? Marriage, children, and eventually death. I I don't think my I don't think my boys swim. I don't know if I'll be having any children anytime soon. I think I've ruined my chances of that. I mean, first of all, that's presuming that a woman would agree to perform the human sex act with me, which has turned out to be more elusive than I ever thought it would, being in a rock band. Uh, and second of all, you gotta assume that all the booze and dope and tacos that I've shoved into my body haven't done something to lessen my sperm count. And third of all, I have to consider that I keep a cell phone by my fucking genitals 24 hours a day, which isn't helping the situation. So my future is is not looking so bright. Every day I land on my feet, I am thankful for being here. Again, this is Big Brian. We're here with Protest the Hero. It's, we're really excited to see you guys tonight. Uh, any, any words of advice for people that are trying to make it out there, you know, playing the guitar in their bedrooms, maybe recording some stuff. What's some last words of advice you can give to a musician trying to make it? Don't start a band. <laughs> Just don't do it. It's not worth it. 
I, you know what, I'm gonna say don't, uh, don't hide behind the excuses. I can't tell you how many times people have come up to me, perfectly nice people, and said something like, oh, we're a really good band, but there's no scene in our town. Boo hoo, and nobody likes us, and nobody comes out to shows. The fact of the matter is, if you're doing something good and you're doing something that's honest and you're doing something that's fresh, people will respond to it. Yeah, sure, you gotta eat shit. Everybody has to eat shit. This shit but it's sometimes very delicious. That's right. That you gotta eat shit before you talk shit. <laughs> no, uh, they, everybody goes through that kind of stuff, but to hide behind the pant leg of an excuse like it's everyone else's fault is a problem. And it's something that I try without being too much of an asshole to say to these people. So I guess the most I can say is like be be fresh, keep it fresh, keep it original, and make no excuses. There you have it, right from the mouth of Protest the Hero. Again, thank you guys. We're excited to see the show tonight. If you guys aren't familiar with the Protest the Hero, you need to go check them out, protestthehero.com. They also are on Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter, and all those other fun things. The show's going to be great. Again, if, let, me, let me just plug in one more time. It's Protest the Hero. If you haven't heard of them, Go check them out. It's a Big Brian with the Skinny Sumo A747 Productions and Utah Valley University signing off. And we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Sometimes a knife right through your heart is exactly what